All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's take a look at testing speakers without using any test gear. You know, you go out there, you run across, traveling around on tour, you find something laying around for sale, at a yard sale, whatever it is, does this speaker work? A nine volt battery is a good way of testing a speaker. If you happen to have one, you can take a nine volt battery and put it across the terminals and it will tell you if the speaker works. If you put the positive of this nine volt battery to the positive of the speaker, it will move outward. And if you put it backwards, the positive to the negative, it will move inward. It's a way of checking polarity. You can visually see on woofers um, what is going on. But you don't always have a battery and I'm gonna show you some very interesting and alternative ways of dealing with it. Let's take a look at testing a speaker with a paper clip. So if, or a pair of keys, if you have a set of keys, you have anything laying around, the first trick to doing this, or the first thing you need to know, is you gotta learn how to be able to move the speaker diaphragm back and forth without making it rub. Now, if you push it at a bad angle, you can hear it rubbing. We don't want it to rub, you wanna move it so that it's silent. And what you're doing is you're moving a coil in a magnetic field and it will generate electricity on the terminals. If you put electricity on the speaker terminals, it moves. If you move the speaker, it generates electricity. So if we take and we ge start generating electricity and we take any piece of metal, conductive metal, put it across the terminals, you'll hear little crackles. And now you don't want to make too good of a connection. You want to kind of make a, a bad connection and just barely touch it while you're moving it. And you'll feel it slightly resisting motion or you'll hear a little sound. Let's try it with a different speaker. Now, if you happen to have a clip lead or some other method of uh, a wire or something, it makes it a little easier, but you don't need it um, for most things um, because the terminals are next to each other. You can put your key across it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one. So I'm moving it. Cool. We know this speaker's got continuity. Now there may be other issues with the speaker. Maybe the surround is cracked or there may be a, the spiders come unglued, but we know there's continuity through the voice coil and that's the major cost in repairing a speaker is reconing it. Very simple and easy, but we don't have to stop there. What if you want to test a horn driver or a coaxial speaker? Now this is a little coax, beautiful little BNC coax. We've got a woofer here that we can check. On the back side of this is a separate speaker, a horn driver, a compression driver. How are we gonna check that? We're not gonna be able to wiggle that with our hands. We can't get in there. We don't have a screwdriver. We're gonna be able to test this stuff on the fly, super easy. So what I'm gonna do is, for this, having clip leads will help. I'm gonna hook a clip lead up from one of the terminals to the driver, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna take another clip lead from the other terminal to the other one on the compression driver. Now we've just hooked the driver in parallel with the um, speaker, the speaker and the compression driver. And I'm gonna remove one of these and wiggle the speaker. And we can hear it, just like we could hear before. But how do we know the compression driver works? Well, because they're hooked up in parallel, if the compression driver does not have continuity, we won't hear anything. And we can prove that by disconnecting the compression driver, saying it's bad, and then moving the speaker. Nothing. And if we hook it back up, that thing's got a powerful magnet. Cool, we've got it. So there's a way to check compression drivers using a speaker as the signal source. We can go farther than that. What about microphones? We have a microphone that we want to test and we don't have anything to test with how do we know that it works well if you take if you have clip leads or some way of attaching maybe you have an xlr cable that's cut off at the end and we connect up to pins two and three and we take a speaker i'm going to use this little guy right here 
and we hook this up to the terminals. I'm going to go ahead and put this right there and wiggle the speaker. You're actually listening to the diaphragm in the microphone acting like a little speaker, making noise from the voltage of wiggling the speaker. So now I'm able to test a microphone using a speaker as a source. But we can go farther than that too. There's other things that we can do. How about headphones? Put this on the recorder. And I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle the speaker. All right, so Putting the headphones on, wiggling the speaker, making that bad connection has made sound come in. All right, so there's headphones, testing headphones. Now, what about home hi-fi speaker? Well, we can do that too. One of those right here. So what I'm going to do is remove the grill. Let's do it with a paper grip. And I'm gonna put this across the terminals in the back and move the woofer. Cool, that works. Um, what about the tweeter? Though this is a two-way box. Well, let's go ahead and listen to that tweeter. I'm gonna set this thing right here. Hopefully it'll stay. You could put your ear up to the tweeter if you had a little cable. You're gonna have to get a little creative there. Cool. And we heard the woofer already. All right, cool, cool. So there's a way to test. Speakers, microphones, headphones, with nothing but a piece of wire, keys, cable, some metal stuff, whatever you got laying around. Um, maybe useful, maybe not, but uh, fun to know and do. Give it a shot and let me know how it works for you. Cool, cool, thanks for joining. <music>